The grass is shorter in the field now thanks to the 60 or so white fluffy lawn mowers last week. I'm much happier in the shorter grass. I've put a knee pad on my leg so that it is steadying my arm on this test to see if it helps and I want to know if my cooling modifications have made a difference. The flight time was 1 minute 20 seconds, so in a word, no, none whatsoever. It might even be worse. At this point, my friend John came over while I was testing and I asked him to film. It's the first time he's seen the machine fly and I liked his reaction. The wind on this occasion is more than any previous test. The tree gives you some idea and this is a calm few seconds. The forecast wind speed was 15 to 17 miles per hour. My thoughts have changed about wind but I'm certainly nervous of it. It has been suggested that a constant headwind might actually help making anti-torque easier. I'm sure that's true but most of the time it's gusting from my experience. Despite this, for the first time I felt that I had enough mental capacity to even think about moving forward or executing an intended your command. Up to now this has been out of the question. However, I had an uncomfortable moment in this clip where the roll angle exceeded anything previous. Let's look at that in slow motion. If you look at the windsock in the background, you notice the wind changes direction and comes from the left of the screen at exactly the same time as my roll to the right. I'm not sure if the wind caused this or if it was me, but I didn't react well to correct it. My immediate reaction was to go down and I think a more experienced pilot wouldn't have done this. They might have even gone up. The long poles save the situation and this is a good reminder not to try removing them. I think it's fair to say I panicked and would have probably saved the situation without touching the ground had I kept my nerve and altitude. I didn't let it put me off and brought it straight back up into a stable hover to regain some confidence. Despite the progress made in hovering there is still a long way to go to hovering proficiency. If it was the wind that caused this then I'm not ready for windier conditions. It's so easy to move far too quick in this game. In regard to cooling, I'm surprised that increased flow didn't make any difference, but now I'm going to bypass the exhaust port area somehow 
Buy a higher pressure pump, mount a bigger belt driven fan and make a fan cowling. I don't want to lose any more than half a horsepower driving the fan so we'll need to choose a fan size and type that's somewhere near and to run it at the correct speed. It has been suggested a few times to place the radiator further back into the downwash. This could be an option but I don't know how much CFM would result going through the radiator and it will re require a lot of modifications with large CG issues to rectify. The other downside could be negative lift as the downdraft pushes on the radiator. I'm not ruling it out but I'm going to go down the normal route first. And if all else fails I'll just fly around with a hose pipe attached. Something I would like to discuss on this type of machine is why don't helicopters use this simple tilt rotor head design and instead use the more complicated blade feathering and swash plates. Here are some thoughts. With a coaxial, torque on the rotor mast hinges can be zero. It's not zero on mine because of my jack shaft, but it's still relatively small. With a single rotor, torque is going to be large. That can be overcome, but it is a potential issue. If you are wondering if gyroscopic forces will prevent the tilting of a single rotor, as long as the rotor isn't solidly mounted to the shaft, then moving the mast will be easy and the aerodynamics will move the rotor in line with the shaft very rapidly. Same scenario as a gyrocopter. The main problem I can think of is you need collective pitch to auto rotate. So if you need collective pitch, then you might as well have cyclic pitch. If you had redundancy in another form like a spare engine and auto rotation wasn't necessary then a tilting mast may be more viable. I did find some information of the development of the SCH2A where it was originally built with a tilting mast and the top speed was too slow. This could be another reason yet to be confirmed. Thanks for all the great suggestions on cooling and everything else. It's a real help. Bye.